Hello everyone. So, as uh, as many of you have probably gathered by now, I am a huge fan of cyberpunk. I was uh, all about cyberpunk back in the day. And it seems to me like there's a lack of good cyberpunk games in the world today. Uh, I think the world has kind of moved on because, you know, cyberpunk is, is kind of over. I mean, we live in a world now of... Of, of the Matrix. We live in this world where there's a huge integrated computer network that everybody can use to communicate with everyone else all over the world using computers. So the fantasy became reality and in that sense it kind of died out. Um, so yeah, cyberpunk has kind of disappeared and science fiction kind of disappeared along with it uh, for uh, in, in large part. But uh, you know me, I, I kind of live in the past. I mean, that's kind of what I do. I mean, that's why I make these videos, I guess. And I used to think that that was a bad thing, that living in the past was uh, something to, you know, something to sort of work against. But uh, now I have to wonder, is, is it really a bad, is it really such a bad thing to live in the past? I mean, if you really think and feel that you belong to a previous time, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's not so bad to live in the past after all. Anyway, this is Cholo. This is a um, a Windows remake of a much older game for the Commodore 64 and also for some other British micros like the uh, ZX Spectrum, or they would call it the ZX Spectrum and stuff like that. Um, but this that game was um, well, it was a good game for its time, but it was very ambitious. I think it was a little too ambitious. It, it basically did like real time first person 3D. Uh, movement at you know on stuff like a Commodore 64 which obviously was not ready for prime time like it it tried and you know it was it it was good for what it was but it was again you know I think it was just kind of too ambitious um but this game is uh not bad it's it's not excellent it, it has some quirks it has some flaws but uh, let's go ahead and get into the game so um, before we start there is a novella which provides a lot of backing for uh, for this game and I'm not going to read this because it really is you know what, I'm gonna I'm just gonna page down through this I'm just gonna start here and I'm gonna page down through this one screen at a time those of you who want to read this can certainly do so but this really is... It is the length of like a of an actual novella, and people complain that I talk too much as it is. So I'm not going to read all of this. Most of this is just background story. Really, the only relevant part kind of comes at the very end uh, for those who just want to play the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and just skip through this. In fact, I can probably skip through this a bit faster because it's there is a lot of text here. I mean, I like to read, but I don't like to read pointless uh, text. Although. You can debate how pointless this is. I mean, maybe it's not pointless. I mean, what is really pointless? What has a point and what doesn't? That's something people can debate about. But I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read all this now. Sorry. Just gonna skip through it. Skippy, skippy, skippy. I'm trying to skip a little slowly so that people who want to actually read this can pause the video. Like we'll have time to pause the video and read the text. But it's just a long story. It's really just a. Um, a story about, uh, I guess it's a science fiction story, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, not going to uh, dwell too much on the implications of all this text because there's a lot here. But basically, you are, you can probably guess you're this Jared person whose name we're seeing a lot, and I don't think we're the Jared who. Uh, was a spokesperson for Subway and lost a lot of weight on Subway sandwiches. I think that was a different Jared. I assume. So basically right here at the end, it sort of tells you what you have to do. So it's like you have to save the world. So basically, yeah, that's it. So you have to, uh, uh, let's see, where's the part where it kind of says what you have to do? Um, Basically, you need to take control of the robots. There are a bunch of robots on this planet that you need to gain control of, and then you need to use the robots to save the world. I can't, uh, I can't find the exact... It was somewhere around here. I don't know why I can't find it now. It was pretty close to the end here, I thought. 
Okay, I'm not going to dwell on it. Anyway, let's just play the game. New game. Here we go. So we're looking at our robot inventory. So you can click through the ro you can cycle through the robots by clicking on these buttons here. But you might notice we have only one robot. So that's it. That's the robot you start with. Um, yeah. So this is um, the Cholo remake by Ovine by Design is the name of the the studio that made the game. And yeah, the RAT system interface because this robot is actually it's it's a rat. It's called Rizzo. We we play Rizzo the rat. Uh, presumably an obvious reference to the the Muppet character so I mean yeah um, you play with WASD and the mouse just like a like a first-person shooter there's a logo for Ovine and you might think there's not much here so the first problem I mean the main problem with this game the main problem that I have with this game is there's not much to it like there's not much to see and a lot of computer games have this problem so many games have this problem that they have sizable environments in the sense that there's you know in terms of just the physical dimensions of the space, there's a lot there, but there's not much there. There's not much in that space. There's a lot of space there, but there's not much in there. So if you wander around this building for a bit, you might think there's nothing here, but no, what you need to find is this computer here. Now this computer is unlocked because that lock symbol there is open. Most computers are locked and you need to hack them in quotation marks, but uh, this one is already open. So here we go. So we can, click between our robot here and number two is the computer that we've just uh, accessed. I won't say hacked because it was unlocked, so we just accessed it normally. So um, you can see the files on the computer here. There's just one in this case. And yeah, password one text. So this is one of two password files. You might kind of get the idea that it says it's top secret. You might kind of get the idea that this file is pretty important and you'd probably be right. So let's go ahead and do this. If I click here, Oh, I need to go back to the... So it's basically loaded the file down here in the lower right. So now if I go back to our Rizzo the Rat robot, I should be able to click here. There we go. And it saved the file in Rizzo's uh, storage here. Actually, I think I could have saved it here as well. Could I have done that? I don't know. Anyway, so you just save files like that. You just go to the robot and click here and it saves the file there. And if you click on this little X here, it will delete that file from our robot. So we can delete this file later if we don't need it. But for now... Uh, Okay, so this is the first of presumably two password files, so okay, okay for now, not bad. And you don't press escape to exit the screen. If you press escape, this little menu pops up, and here you can redefine the controls, you can see the controls, I mean, you can you can remap the controls by just leaving the default, so yeah, you can turn the music and sound effects on and off, you can quit the game by saying terminate or resume. So the way you get back to the game is by clicking return to game down here. So there we go. So we found a password file, so that's potentially useful. Uh, well, not potentially. It, it is useful because we will need some of those passwords. So, okay, and here's the exit. Very nice. Now, right off the top, you'll see this guy here. And what you want to do is shoot him. I, I think I didn't mention you can, with Rizzo the right, you can shoot. Rizzo has an, it has an uh, integrated laser. You can shoot by clicking the left mouse button. Now, notice what happens. If I damage, damage this guy enough, he becomes paralyzed, and then he stands around like that for a bit. But robots will automatically self-repair, uh, and the self-repair works fairly quickly, so if you just leave him for a bit, he will... Uh, I'm saying he, maybe it's a she robot, or a non-binary non gendered robot, I don't know. I hope that people can forgive me for calling the robots he in this game, using masculine pronouns instead of, you know, non-binary pronouns or something like they. I'm not going to call this robot a they. I'm not going to say they might. Yeah, so I'm just going to say he. I, I apologize if that offends anyone. Um, so this robot here, um, he, like all the robots, will just automatically recharge himself as time goes by. So what we've done here is when you paralyze a robot by damaging the robot enough, you can then walk up to it and try to hack it. And all you need is the password. Well, one of the passwords that we saw, in fact, I think the first password we saw in that password file was plugin. So let's go ahead and try that. P-L-U-G-I-N. Password accepted. So that was the right password. So that's the password to this first robot that you see. Plug in. All one word. No space in between. Um, you don't see the password as you type it in, as you might have noticed. So you have to kind of be careful. But I mean, if you get it wrong, you can try again. Like it's not going to blow up the robot or something if you type in the wrong password. So now we have a second robot here. So let's go ahead and go back to the game. And that robot, he will soon stop. Uh, he will stop. There we go. 
And he's not moving now because we control him. So he, he no longer has any autonomy. He's basically become our slave, so to speak. So how do you switch between robots? The easiest way is to use the function keys. So I believe this guy that we just acquired is F3. Yes, he is. So you can see the name at the bottom. So we're now controlling Igor. And see in the upper right there, there's that little bar that's slowly going down. Now that's our damage meter. So that's how close this robot is to destruction. So we kind of got it up there because we had to damage the robot to hack him. But uh, he's self-repairing at a decent rate. Oh yeah, and these red guys will come, will go, these red guys are constantly patrolling around and sometimes they'll attack you. I don't know why, like at the beginning of the game, they, they tend to attack you, but now they're not attacking me. I, I, have no, I have no idea why. I don't know under what circumstances they attack and when they don't, but anyway. Okay. So this is Igor. Now, Igor has the advantage that he can hack other robots. Um, or not... Uh, I shouldn't say hack other robots. Hack computer terminals. That's it. He can hack computer terminals. So the computer terminal that we had in there, that had that unlocked symbol on it. But if you find a computer terminal with a locked symbol on it, you can still access it using Igor. So that's Igor's kind of advantage. What are his disadvantages? He doesn't have a laser. You can't shoot with him. So um, Rizzo, you might also notice Igor is considerably slower than Rizzo. So uh, I, go, I can go back to Rizzo by pressing F1. There we go. So now I'm controlling Rizzo the rat. So Rizzo's kind of good to explore with because he's a lot faster than Igor and he can shoot shoot, uh, which might be useful if he needs to defend himself against something for some reason. Um, but you need to keep Igor around because he's useful for, for hacking um, computer terminals and stuff like that. So anyway, okay, so far so good. So that was basically the tutorial. If you read the game's tutorial, that was basically it. So it shows you how to use the two robots. And now what we need to do is acquire some other robots. So again, you'll need to acquire a few other robots to win the game. Uh, and Basically, at the beginning, Rizzo and Igor kind of work as a team. So Rizzo is going to shoot the robots to disable them, just as we did with Igor. And then when they become paralyzed, Igor is going to walk up and quickly try to hack the robot and uh, get his um, get get the the password for the robot in. So anyway, um, actually, is that true? I'm wondering if that's true because. Um, because like I said, Igor's strength is that he can hack computer terminals, but I'm not sure that you need Igor to hack other robots, since, I mean, we as Rizzo were, were able to hack Igor. Hmm. That's an interesting question. I'm not sure. I might, actually, Rizzo might be able to hack other robots when they've been deactivated. I should know that, but I'd, I'm actually not sure. Hmm. Let's try it. Um... So let me go ahead and right off the top, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to do something that um, you're not supposed to do until later. Oh, and by the way, um, so you see there's that map in the upper left. There's like a little mini map there. The game doesn't have a full size map. The game comes with a PDF file. That's kind of a, a slightly better map, but it's not. It's still not very good. Um, so yeah, the mini map is, I mean, it's it's useful. It's certainly better than nothing. Like the little white dot shows where you are. And the layout of the land is very simple. Um, we're here on the west side of, of, of you know, of a body of water. It's so like to the east, there's like a, a little bay there. And then on the east side of the bay is another land mass. And that's it. That's the whole scope of the game. So it's not a very big game. It's not a very long game. Um... Yeah, that's the that's basically the whole game map. And you might think there's no compass. It looks like there's no compass, but if you look closely, see on that outer ring, on the very like outermost ring in the center of our uh, HUD there, there is, right now at the top, there's a little filled in arrow. And if I turn around 180 degrees, notice there is a hollow arrow there. So there are two arrows. This hollow arrow that's now at the top points south. So right now I'm facing south because the hollow arrow is at the top. And if I turn around like this, for example, now I'm facing west because north is to my right. And yeah, this uh, solid filled in arrow points north. So now I'm facing north. So yeah, so the game actually has a built-in compass and a um, and little mini map. So that makes navigation not too bad. Um, it would be a little bit, it would be a little bit better if you could see more detail on that mini map, like you could actually see features and buildings and things, but, uh, again, you know, the game's not that big, so it's forgivable. I think we can survive. I mean, you can, you can get around without, without more details in the new map. I mean, more details, more details would obviously be useful, but we can survive without them. So what do we want to do now? Um, what I'd like to do is get another robot. So, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to look around. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Like I said, um, I'm going to do something which you're supposed to do later in the game, but I'm going to... 
Yeah, it's weird. These red guys always attack me at the beginning, but uh, I think after you attack, after you hack Igor, then they don't anymore. Um, so these red guys are just kind of they're just like regular sentinels or whatever. You can kind of ignore them. They're kind of I guess they can be annoying if they attack you, but they usually don't unless you do something you're not supposed to do. Uh, but what I'm looking for is the flying robot. There is a flying robot in the game, and the robot is very easy to acquire as long as you know its password. But at the beginning, you're not supposed to. Yeah, oh, 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 there it is. All right, let's do this. Let's do this now. It will be a huge... Oh, 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 oh dear, that red robot is attacking me now. Um, this is bad. Okay. So the red robots start attacking you if you shoot at... Is this guy gonna... Oh, now he's... Okay, he's just ignoring me now. Okay, I'm gonna follow this this flying robot, though, and see where it goes. Now, this is a little bit annoying. This this part gets kind of annoying, having to... having to trap the, the flying robot, because... Um, you need to wait for it to land. It, if you shoot it in the air... Well, first of all, it's, it's kind of hard... You can't aim straight up, but yeah, I guess you can... Yeah, you can actually, you can shoot it well enough from down here, I guess, but uh, even if you do, uh, you can't get up in the air. So you have to wait for it to land. It's a bit annoying. Actually, I wonder, does it come down when it becomes paralyzed? I'm just wondering now. I always wait. Oh, never mind. It's landing. So let's go ahead and damage it preemptively and... There we go, paralyzed. All right, yeah, we can. Okay, so what I was saying about needing Igor to hack other robots is not true. You need Igor to hack computer terminals, but you can hack other robots just with Rizzo alone. Cool, okay. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is type in the password for this robot. I believe it is Thunt, T-H-U-N-T, -T, like, um, like Hunt, except with another T at the beginning. So T-H-U-N-T, -T. and? Password accepted. All right, so now we have this robot as well. That is a huge help. You know, I'm going to save. Please select a game save position. Uh, can I not save? Hold on. Return to game. Uh. Uh oh. Did I? Did I mess something up? Displaying save game. Uh, select a game save position. Uh oh. What happened? Um. Yeah, there we go. So what I've done now is, yeah, because I had this file open here, I saved it here. So I guess every robot has four save slots, so I've saved the file now to the first save slot of this flying robot. But how do I return to the game? Uh, um... Normally I can return to the game by clicking down here. Uh, I think I might have broke something. Well, that's annoying. Please select a game save position. I can't do anything. Well, that's very disconcerting. Um, I don't know if I encountered a game bug or if. Um, Hold on, let me check the controls here. So was the accelerate and decelerate? Yeah, we don't need that now. I have done the terminal. I mean, come on. I'm just trying to press everything to see if I can do something, but I can't, uh... I think that might be a bug in the game. I think I might have somehow borked the game in such a way. I wonder if trying to save somehow messed it up, but I can't see how... I can't see why. And it's not because I tried to get this flying droid, because I've, I've done that before, and it's it's worked. 
Well, folks, um, I apologize. Uh, I, I managed to royally screw up the game. Um, okay, that's an inauspicious beginning, but... Um, okay, well, I guess that will be the first video. I'll have to... I'll have to uh, quit here and just start from start from this point next time because I can't even save the game. Like I can't do anything at this point. I can't I can't return to the game. I can't. Please select a game save position. It won't let me save. All right. Um, I guess I'm I'm done doddering around here for now. I'll go ahead and uh, and just stop the video here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Sorry that uh, it, it ended so suddenly. I meant to go a little bit longer than this, but okay. Well, we've seen the main stuff of the game already. We've seen kind of the, the main idea of the game. So next time, hopefully, we'll get a little further than this and start to doing a little more exploration around the game world. So uh, until then, thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.